So here's my electronic setup. I have a high tech servo as usual at HS7954SH. Um, this is a high torque servo. Um, it runs at about 400 ounces. I chose to go with a little bit stronger servo for the for the Yeti XL um, just because of the size and the size of the wheels that it has to turn. This servo is built pretty well. Um, I don't plan on too much water submersion with this Yeti XL so i um, not going to do a lot of waterproofing with this one just a little bead of um, marine grease around the, around the servo horn so that's the servo high tech 7954 SH spectrum receiver I use Spectrum products, um, Spectrum radios, so SR301, three channel receiver. I'm using the 2200 kV Castle motor. And for the ESC, I'm using a Mamba Monster 2. This ESC comes configured for one connector. To see just two leads coming off of there. Um, so you have to add an extra wire to make it work for uh, two connectors. You would normally put these two on one connector here. Uh, this attracts a style, but pretty much the same procedure for um, all connectors. But that's for one. Since I need two, I will leave one in one side additional connector put in the other side now I will link these two by this 10 gauge connector I've soldered up and got the leads right on that I want to do is slide that into one side on one and then other side other connector Um, these get snapped in if you're familiar with Traxxas connectors. It takes a little bit of force to snap them in. I'll do that off camera later, but that's how you get it to run too. Got a nice long length in there. A lot of times they don't give you enough space, and I like to be able to move this. Probably put a little length of um, heat shrink here to keep them together a little better. And that's the ESC. I have it configured pretty basic. Um, didn't change much. I upped the BEC to support the the servo and um, that's basically it turn the braking up just a little bit no drag brake of course on this one and uh, not too much else so now I begin installing these electronics into the Yeti starting with the servo Team Baxter. the first electronic that gets installed is the servo I began mounting the servo and I realized I'd have to do some special um, mounting in order to get it in. It, it only goes in one way. Um, my wires come out this way so it's a perfect fit if I was to place it in this way but um, I cannot um, due to the length of the link. I've already built the link that, that connects the, the steering linkage to the, um, to the servo. This link is at a set length. Of course, if you had a longer push rod, uh, you could change the push rod and get an appropriate length from the servo horn to your steering linkage up front. I do not have an alternate turnbuckle, so I will have to be using the stock one, which means that I have to place the servo uh, horn forward. It means the horn t to the uh, front of the vehicle. Do the wiring of this high-tech servo, um, it's a little tricky kind of getting it in there. But I've done a little loose mount and I can get it in there. Uh, the way that it bends the wires, I decided to go ahead and put a little dielectric grease around there. Um, just to kind of help out. And due to the fact that this is a tub with no holes in it, um, if any water gets in there, it's kind of just going to sit there. So another reason why I added the dielectric grease. Uh, kind of to help stop corrosion, prevent corrosion, and so forth. Um, so now I have to kind of get this in here. Uh, little, 
in my case I'm going to have to run the wire under the servo kind of got it in there get it in there the best I can I've got nearly seated I have just a little wobble there but as I tighten it down the servo screw should take care of that that wobble is due to the fact that it's actually sitting on that cable there so tighten it down real quick so I've just got two screws in but it's already made a tremendous difference in the stability of this servo you can see it's really locked in there get the other two screws into the servo and then this wire gets mounted into this routed into this um, little recess here Axial was so kind to give a little plate to cover this up like so so that gets screwed on and then this wire gets run into the receiver box gets a couple of little rubber gaskets but I'll move on to that later um, the manual instructs you to put this um, linkage through and to go ahead and uh, link it up what I'm gonna do is go ahead and link it up so it just slides right into this um, hole through there you can see the end of it coming out there um, gets attached to your servo of course and then that link gets um, if I can ever get it out that link gets attached to this steering linkage here up front here you can see the link mounted and uh, everything's working like it should there's the screw that I just attached it with I'm not going to attach the servo horn yet um, just because I need to turn on the servo and get the get the servo zeroed before I attach the servo horn so I got the servo installed and run the wire underneath the little protector um, the wires run into the receiver box here I've had to go ahead and wire up the ESC as well as the wires run into the receiver box here under this um, sort of rubber plug this is a waterproofing plug and when the top goes on it kind of seals it all together the receiver box has this little rubber gasket that's been installed I just kind of pushed it in um, come separate in there nice little gasket to push that in there and then that sits on top of the box of course with the wire sealed in here's a little better view of the wires running through that little rubber silicone seal uh, they they split the seal and give you just enough space um, with a couple little recess areas to get three wires in and out they also give you the smaller piece uh, with one hole in it you can thread your um, thread your antenna wire through that one and um, that goes in the little separate slot next door and then as I showed before the little receiver box goes on top and seals all that in after this receiver box top goes the little ESC mount it's a recessed area on top of the receiver box where these four posts go and then the ESC gets double stick taped to that if you have a ESC mount that will fit those two screws you can screw it down but um, mine is getting double sided taped on there and that's pretty much most of the electronics assembly the gearbox gets built in the next step and uh, that's when the motor gets installed so I got the mount on nice flush space for mounting the ESC I'm not gonna double stick tape the ESC right now until I get the motor um, installed that way I can determine the appropriate lengths for the motor wires uh, it could go forwards or backwards either way um, probably go forwards but We'll determine that in the future step. So now I'll move on to assembling the gearbox for the motor.